Hey guys, welcome back uh, to the channel once again. Uh, we're working back on the WD. Uh, we've got the motor uh, rebuilt at this point, but there's still a few other things I need to do uh, to the rest of the tractor prior to setting that motor in. Let me flip my camera around here and we'll show you what we got going on. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've got the tractor um, now backed in the other direction from when we actually pulled the motor out over there by the uh, shop area. And I have power washed the in, inner rails, uh, scraped them out. And I have power washed those now and made it look a whole lot better. It was pretty uh, corroded like most of them get. I also cleaned out inside the bell housing. I've got a new throw out bearing coming. Uh, so I want to get all the junk and soot and everything out of that. So we've cleaned that out as well. Uh, however, uh, when it's moving around, uh, it sounds like that right uh, brake is getting in a bind a little bit. Um, so I'd like to tackle that prior to getting the engine set in here. But most importantly, when I was draining the fluids out of the back half, um, out of the bottom of the PTO and then right up above the PTO on the bottom side of the uh, torque tube a bunch of crud was coming out which is probably tip, typically normal for a tractor of this age but when I looked inside the reservoir for hydraulics can't really see it right now but right down in the bottom there is a ton of buildup um, I don't think it's stuck in the neck just the way everything angles. I think it's kind of thick. So, to build on that, prior to that discovery, as you can see, the rams are extended out. So I took my floor jack and put a little pressure up on them because they won't go down. Put a little pressure up. Kind of got them broke free. Um, I released the pressure at the pump, which should allow me to push it down and any fluid that was remaining inside those lines would be dumped into the, through the pump into the reservoir and, and then drained out. However, I couldn't get them to go down. The rams are clean, so they should slide in there with no problem. But once I discovered that and I started looking at the fluid in the pump, I realized that maybe there's so much crud and junk in there that it can't be pushed back in. So today's task is figure out what's going on with the hydraulic system. Uh, to do so, unfortunately, it's not a real easy uh, task, task to get to. So what we're going to do is pull the uh, side frame rail off. I've got to unbolt the connections here for my power steering. Um, this one's not bolted in to the rail. It looks like there's a connection on the back side there that kind of connects up front and back. So, we won't have to worry about unbolting that. We'll get that disconnected. We've got the brake lever on the right. We've got to get disconnected. We'll go ahead and drop the lines out of both hydraulic cylinders. And that's going to tell us too which will be done up front, or probably the first thing we'll do. That's gonna tell me uh, potentially why that cylinder didn't wanna close up. You know, is the line completely plugged? Do I have fluid there? So that's gonna help me kind of determine what may be going on with the pump. Uh, either way, with all the junk that's inside there, I just can't allow that to be pumping through uh, the system, even if I would just dump new oil or try to flush it out, I, I really don't know what's in there. So I want to go ahead and once the side rails off, we'll pull the pump off, obviously disconnect lines, pull the pump off of there and inspect it. If y'all remember when I first got this uh, WD and we started kind of working on that engine, there was a noise coming from this back area. Um, the flywheel was fine. The pressure plate and clutch appeared to be okay as well. The starter was good. I'd used it on another tractor and it worked fine. So I tore into the engine because it had a tight spot in it. I found a couple of bearings that 
weren't the greatest, but they wouldn't have caused the noise. But either way, it's got a new engine now. So I'm wondering if maybe the hydraulic pump uh, isn't locked up and that cam is what was making the, my noise. So we may be able to solve several issues by just getting that thing opened up. But anyway, we'll flop over to the time-lapse uh, camera and we'll kind of zip through this for you guys. And uh, if I need to jump in on something, then I'll shoot a quick little video of that and we'll see what we've got going on. Here we go. All right, so I want to cut in here real quick and uh, give an update on the cylinder. So I've got both lines off of both sides and letting them drain. Not much fluid came out, but the, uh, the rams will not collapse. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull both the rams off. I don't know if it's one that's holding the other or if they both got an issue or what. But I'm going to pull both of those uh, off. And then I'll just have to take them to the bench and open them up and see what we've got going on. Is it full of junk in there? Is there a seal issue? Uh, I think these actually have packing in it. So is there something that's hanging it up or what? So that will be uh, the next step. I'm going to go ahead while it's on the tractor. I'll put my floor jack up underneath here and lift up just to pull the pressure where it's in a bind because I don't want to have to be trying to fight that on the bench. So I'll go ahead and get it where it's in the uh, extended position. Uh, so I got two collar pins and drop the back out, drop the front over. And I should be able to have both those off fairly quickly. I won't tackle those right now. We'll continue working on the, uh, getting the hydraulic pump exposed so we can get it out of there. But let's go ahead and get those off and then they're ready for the next step. All right, so I've been working for the last maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, getting the side frame rail off. And you saw that take place. Um, they're not all that awfully, awfully heavy. They're just uh, kind of awkward. So I like to take a cherry picker and get a strap around that thing and then I don't have to try to manhandle it and worry about pulling my back. So just stra uh, strapped it around the front side of where the uh, the side pulley could come out got that cover off anyway we got it off of there um had to take out or take off the brake rod in the spring which still remains on the side rail uh, we got those two cylinders out of the way as well and here is the pump so this is what i'll be working on next uh, not too many bolts to take out i think there's these two then there's a one up here one on the other side uh maybe I think there was one back in there, I can't remember. Uh, so anyway, we'll get those uh, taken off and we'll pull this thing out and see what we've got uh, going on at this point. So one other thing I did notice, I've never seen one before, and this is the first power steering uh, WD or WD-45 I've ever had. So there's a block that goes right up in here. And this, this piece here you're seeing is part of the bracket there's a little block that goes in there it takes a longer bolt to fit through that and it was the long one right there versus the other three that are the same size so um yeah that bracket just slides up underneath there and behind that rail i could see that being kind of a pain maybe to get on and off of there but either way there's a little block piece that goes in there and takes that longer bolt so I have to remember that when we put it back together and then also this is the longer bolt up here on the front housing and we've got that kind of laid out in order I like to lay those bolts out uh, like that on something that's going to be a short term disassembly that way I can just put them right back in there and not have any issues I will go ahead and replace the seal around here um, 
I think it's just some cork. I've done one before, but I'll need to uh, go ahead and get some of that ordered. So I'll have what I need. So anyway, I uh, have to take off, looks like the PTO rod, get that back out of the way. Piece that goes back for the uh, snap coupler, traction booster piece. Um, go ahead and get that rod dropped down out of the way. Shouldn't be a big deal. And linkage going up to the uh, rod at the operator station and I think just the two lines on the back technically I only need to do the steel line because the other line here is what went to that other ram which is already off so it'll pull itself right up through there so anyway um, and the traction booster all right so enough of that let's get to it we'll get this thing pulled off Okay, so we got the hydraulic pump off and everything looks good. Um, looking down on the inside here, I was expecting to see it really full of crud and there's stuff in there, but nothing crazy. We look right across over there, there's the filler neck and that's what I was seeing from the top side. So never having looked in here before, made me think that maybe it's full and I got a big mess. Well, it's not as big of a mess as what I was thinking it may, may be. So <clears throat> that's a good thing. I'm gonna get all that cleaned out. Um, over here on the pump, it's nice and free. Each of those move. Rollers look good. They're not worn anywhere. They roll fine. You don't see any spots on them. So, don't need to do anything with the pump besides a new gasket. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. Took a little bit to get there, but it's just part of it. Might as well do it now and know what you have than to have some new paint on here and then have to do all this. It'd be a nightmare. So, um, reaching up in here where the engine mates up and I'm just turning that obviously by hand everything looks good on the cam lobes I don't see anything that little spot right there on that one to the right I'll clean those up good everything is good and tight um, there's no loose bearings or anything in there which is great um, also I've already inspected the clutch and it looks great shape as well. Um, I do have a new seal to go up underneath that cap. I just seal it back up because I was getting ready to power wash. Um, man, if I could get this thing back out side to power wash before I reassemble, that would be awesome. I'll have to check out. Obviously, I have my pump back on there and stick my cap back in that. There's quite a bit of cred. Up in there almost looks like uh, fish eggs. Kind of a nasty greenish look. Look like slime. Ooh, there's some teeth busted off right there. See that on that gear? So let's see. What's that driving? Nothing. The only thing it'd be on is this gear or this, uh, this pulley, a belt pulley or something. So somebody probably pushed that thing in when it was when the engine was running and knocked them teeth right off of that thing so I want to make sure I recover those can't be too far so I'll get get that uh, cavity cleaned out as well get all this junk cleaned off I've got to order some parts tomorrow anyway so I'll get me a new gasket for that I think next um, like I said, I had that brake kind of making some noise on me. Um, I think what I would like to do is maybe in this same video here, I'll go ahead and pull this back cover off of the rear end. There's really not much 
that I need to get out of the way there. We'll just take off the remote and the light, which is a couple of bolts. The front side of the remote went to the pump, so it's off. Should be easily movable. Pull off the stand here. And I think, the, yeah, the ears of the PTO. Have to pop them off and let that PTO twist around there and just hang hang down low and pull out some maybe three quarter inch bolts here on the side either side get the plate out of the way and then i can just zip that off with my drill pretty quickly i'd like to just look in there to see if i've got any issues with my gearing um and then basically at that point i've looked at everything with the exception of the transmission top and really, I mean, there's not a whole lot left involved to get that thing opened up either. So, seems like a lot of times on these projects you get going and then it's like, where do you stop? So, anyway, we'll see where it goes. I've got covers I can pull off here for the brakes. Uh, that means I'll have to have the seat here out of the way, which really cleans up the back half. I'm throwing paint on it. The fenders have got to come off. So shoot, man, we'll be stripped down pretty good. So anyway, that's where we're at at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and flop back over to Tom Lapp's camera. We'll slide around here to the back and uh, let's go ahead and pull that off and see if we've got any uh, evidence of any chip gears or anything in the rear end of that WD. Let's get rolling. Okay, so as you saw, we got the back cover opened up here. Um, everything looks pretty good, except it's been sitting for a while. You can tell that there's just some rust and stuff up in there. Uh, found a few little bitty pieces of, of a tooth or metal laying in there, nothing major. I'll clean that out, uh, put a new gasket around this thing, and uh, probably leave it open until I get this axle out. I got I know for sure I've got a brake problem up here, so I will uh, leave it open until that point. Go ahead and clean it out, and uh, probably have to end up putting probably two new axle seals back here. If they've been dry that long; they're probably not really any good. So we'll have to uh, pull the brake pins out, which will be fun, and get the axle pulled and ready for the brakes so got a lot of stuff going on i'd like to kind of not get too much going on at once on this thing while it's still able to roll it probably go ahead and get that hydraulic uh, pump back on and get that cavity sealed up just to keep dirt and stuff out of it and then the back side i may just stick the cover on but not seal it up just to keep anything from getting in there so anyway that's about it. We'll uh, shut it down for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe and leave comments. Have a good day.